This video is the third in a series on the practice of controlled drainage. In the previous video, we discussed the design of controlled drainage systems, and in this video, we'll look at an example of how we can apply those concepts to a system design. So here's a contour map of an example field, and then here are our contour elevations ranging from 41.5 feet to 46 feet. If we were to do a common design with a main at the bottom of the field and laterals running up the slope, it might look something like this. If we put a control structure at the outlet to do controlled drainage, we'd have a control zone like this using two foot zone elevation interval. But then with this layout, we'd have no good opportunity to add another control structure if we wanted to create another zone. So now if we start by designing with control drainage in mind, we can think about how to divide the field up into control zones and then figure out a layout for each zone. We could divide the field into two control zones using a two foot zone elevation interval and splitting the field at the 44 foot elevation contour. This gives us two management zones, one from 42 to 44 feet and then another from 44 to 46 feet. Each zone will then be managed by its own control structure, and then we can think of that control structure as the outlet for that zone. Now that we've got our management zones, we can locate our control structures. We could put one at the bottom of the field at the field outlet, and then the second structure could be located anywhere along that 44 foot elevation contour. Now we can design a layout for each zone. For this example, it might look something like this. Since we put our first control structure at 41.5 feet at the bottom of the field, instead of at 42 feet, which is the bottom elevation of the management zone, what happens in this small area then between those elevations? If we go back to this earlier example, the water table can rise to our target depth at the bottom contour of our management zone. And as we move up in elevation, the water table rise will be further away from our target. If the control structure is below the bottom contour of the management zone, the opposite happens. Now the potential water table rise will be above our target depth. So we can go back and redesign the system so that the control structure is at that 42 foot bottom contour. Or perhaps the farmer will decide that for that small of an area, they're willing to accept a higher water table at times. Uh, for the convenience of having that control structure at the field outlet. Going back to our field again and looking at another alternative, this time let's put our first control structure on the 42 foot contour. The second structure again goes on the 44 foot contour, but we had it on the east edge of the field before. But again, that control structure could be located anywhere along that 44 foot contour that makes sense. So if we decide it works better to put it on the west edge of the field, we end up with something like this. Then once again, we come up with a drainage layout for each zone individually, which might look like this for this design. So we've looked at a two zone design, but what if we wanted more control of the system? and we're willing to spend a little more for that option. In that case, we could look at a three zone design where now we have a one and a half foot zone elevation interval. Then our management zones could look like this with our three control structures. So our choice of two zones or three zones comes down to the trade-off we discussed earlier. Two zones will be less expensive, but gives us less management control whereas three zones gives us more management control, but with some added expense. What if we want even more control? Well, we can look at four zones here with a mix of one foot and one and a half foot zone elevation intervals like this. Once we've located our control structures and the drainage main, we can come up with a profile of our main to get an idea of how our management zones will function. The grids on this field are 20, 200 feet by 200 feet, and so the field then is 2,000 feet by 2,400 feet, or 110 acres. So we can set up a table then for our control structures, 
The first control structure is at the field outlet or zero distance from the outlet at the 41.5 foot elevation. And using our grid, or in practice we'd get this from our design software or GIS software, the first control zone is 13 acres. Our next control structure is 1200 feet from the outlet at a 43 foot elevation and controls 51 acres. And then so on for our other two control structures. So now we can think about whether four control structures make sense. Zones one and four are fairly small. Ideally, we'd like to have 30 acres or more per zone. So based on this, we might decide two or three zone system makes more sense. But if the farmer wants to have more control, perhaps they'll decide, decide they want to invest in a four zone system. If we plot the profile then, here's our surface profile starting at 41.5 feet and then up to about 46.5 feet. If our target water table depth is two foot below the soil surface, here's what that profile will look like in each management zone. So as we've discussed before, we're at our target depth at the control structure location, and then we get further off as we move up in elevation until our next control structure reset. So now that we've discussed design and looked at an example, in the next video, we'll discuss management of control drainage systems.